The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her power of engineer to help you. Yes, you find things on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search of this week? Okay, this week, I'm replacing this toy. Let's go to the overhead, and I'll show the toy. Um... And we're de we designed this PCB to have a different microcontroller. Yeah. And uh, I want... By the way, that's the outside. That's the outside. Um, and so I'm going to, you know, I know I'm going to use a microcontroller or something. And all the microcontrollers I'm thinking of using, basically none of them have DAX. Or they don't have DAX with DMA in them. And so instead of fighting um, an 8-bit DAC on an ESP32, I was, was going to use I2S as an audio output because I wanted to have fairly good quality audio and um, I wanted to drive the speaker directly. And so, um, you know, historically I've used the Max 98 357, which is a very, very popular and a really wonderful uh, I2S amplifier that it has, you know, only one little weird detail about um, if you change the clock rate, sometimes it does a little bit of a pop on Raspberry Pi Linux, but otherwise it's a very good I2S amplifier. Uh, and I wanted to, I was going to think of using that, but I thought maybe I would take a look and see if there's any other uh, good option. So let's look um, at the computer. So this is, again, the chip that I tend to use. And it's extremely popular on DigiKey. You can see there's 50,000 in stock almost. Um, you know, 43,000 here and then another 6,500 uh, available at the factory. So, um, you know, this is a great um, I2S amplifier chip and one of the nice things about this in addition is it doesn't have an m clock input uh, so it's really good if you want to save one pin but i also you know i've used this chip for you know like almost like a decade it feels like so i wanted to see if there's any other good options not saying that this is an option i'm going to go with but uh it's always good to take a look at some other possibilities so i want to look in audio amplifiers and i want to look at active um surface mount sensors and I'll tell you one thing that um, is, is interesting, which is, um, you know, you can search for this. The amplifiers that are, I'm going to say normally stocking and, and not look at marketplace just for now. Um, one interesting thing is um, if you look at the amplifiers, like, for example, this IS-31, the first one, this one is a analog input one not a digital input one so in this topic the analog the audio amplifiers there's mixed analog input and digital input and so you know the the challenge is is that you want to narrow down as much as you can but then you will have to search through the data sheets to find uh, some good options that said there's a couple of things you can do to simplify things like for example um you know Nothing that is eight pins is going to be digital input. Like this is a uh, like a microphone capsule input. Um, nothing with eight pins is going to be digital because if you're going to do I two S, you need M clock, B clock, L R clock, uh, and data. So that's like four, and then you need power and ground. And usually you have more than one power and more than one ground. And you need the two speaker outputs and. Um, now this is an eight, but that's like, that's assuming no other inputs. And if you have I2S digital, you almost always have I squared C input, or you have a mute or a shutdown pin. Basically you don't have eight pins. It's very rare to have, I mean, I've never seen an eight pin I2S input chip other than like the CES 4434. It's, and that's not a speaker driver. So what I decided to do to kind of simplify this is, um, looking at uh first off i can filter on the power so i have to drive this quarter watt eight ohm uh, amplifier so um the first thing i did is i just filtered out anything that was less than uh three 300 milliwatts eight ohms and then no speaker amplifier really is going to be um for the the pricing i'm willing to spend which is you know i'm not going to spend a couple more than a couple dollars is going to be more than 10 watts so i can filter out and just look at that um second i don't want um i want either like one channel mono or stereo um i don't want just headphones i mean i don't mind if it has also headphone output i guess so that's fine although I, you know, I think two channel stereo is going to always be more expensive. And then of course you definitely are not going to fit that into an eight pin chip. 
Um, next, you know, I can do power supply, but I think I'm going to leave that for last. Um, okay, and then there is package device. Um, so, like I said, I think that I'm not going to look at anything with eight pins. Um, it needs to be nine pins or more. And I also, again, do not like BGAs in my process. It's, you know, very um, time consuming to debug them and to place them. And so I'm going to search only, and I don't, well, I don't want anything that's 48 pins. I'm going to go to 32 pins maximum. And then I kind of selected out all the um, BGAs. There's a lot of BGA amplifiers I found out while doing this. Um, I also don't think I want 20 SOIC. It's going to be way too big. Get rid of these BGAs. Get rid of this BGA. More BGA removal. 60 SOIC is, you know, maybe that'll fit. That'll be fine. Okay, so let's let's look at these. Also, our internet's much faster today, which is kind of nice. Okay, so, and then for pricing, let's look at pricing for 500 pieces or more. And so there are features like I2S, I2C, and those definitely will be digital. But I'll say that there are some that didn't have I2S in the list that were I2S. So just something to watch out for. Um, another thing is uh, voltage. I want something that will run off of, I think, 3.3 volts. So I'm going to narrow the search here. And then sometimes I don't have the power supply. So I'm going to remove everything that needs 8 volts because I don't have 8 volts available. Okay, so now we've got a couple options, um, and I'll look at the uh, mono ones later, but like I said, you know, these are mixed together. So this one, for example, is analog input, and then so are the PAM series, etc. Let's look at maybe mono instead of looking at the stereo. Let's look at only mono. Okay, let's see what we got. So down here, uh, let's see, the max 98 is down here. Yeah, so the max 98 series is, is down here. Oh, let me look at um, multiple. Let's show. Oh, by the way, I've never shown this. You can have, you can have a display like many more than um, just 25 at a time. So the max 98, 358 and 57 are down here. So, you know, this is ones that have a lot of stock in them. Um, uh, so I actually went through and like, I kind of searched each one to see which ones were analog and digital. And that just meant going through the data sheets, but it was worth it because, um, I did find one that had uh that the pricing was a little bit less it's you know about a dollar 50 in quantity the tfa 9879 and this is actually a pretty nice uh amplifier that was available um uh, so let's look at that it has um i2s input so you know i immediately i like honed in on like okay it's got you know an i2s input bus pcm you know, 3.3 volt logic. Um, it runs from 2.5 to 5.5 volts, so it's great. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to have a little booster on my design because it runs off two double A's. So I'll have to run it at 3.3 volts anyways, so this will be fine. It also needs a 1.8 volt uh, digital supply, but that's that's fine. That's not for the amplifier, that's for the internal logic. And um, another kind of neat thing is that there is a I squared C interface, which is a little bit more complicated um but it does mean that it has um let's find it it's got some cool i squared c stuff that you can do it's got a built-in like dsp with digital volume control which i thought was really nice because um oftentimes in your mp3 player like a, this might be mp3 playback on your microcontroller you don't have a volume control setting like that is a separate you know, um, thing that usually is handled as like a post processor. And most MP3 decoders just take whatever digital input and they just like kind of blast it out into the I2S data. And then, you know, sometimes you can do a multiply, but sometimes, you, you know, you may not have as much time to go through and, and multiply out every data sample before it gets shipped out. So having the um, 
DSP here on the analog output means that like you could remotely or um, with a potentiometer that's not in the signal path, use that to tweak the audio volume. And there's also an equalizer um, and bass and trouble control. So I thought that was, you know, like zero crossing volume control, power limiter, basically a very nice, um, you know, I, I squared C control interface for this uh, very low cost amplifier um, that's also class D. So you're going to get good performance is good for like, I mean, what's funny is it says like good for portable gaming and MP3 players. So while, you know, I may still use the, you know, max 98, um, 350, 375 I tend to use um and it's very interested in this part I think it's a, a, a not uh often used um I've never seen this used in other people's designs whereas the max 98 I've seen a lot um but this is definitely my my pick of the week for interesting chip I'm probably gonna make a breakout for this because um I like the parametric controller I squared C I think that would be really useful when you can't do that on your microcontroller when you're doing your audio playback and that's a great search